So we have uh, developed several ideas of uh, quantum physics, quantum mechanics and the description that we are using is uh, Schrodinger's description or Schrodinger's formulation of uh, quantum mechanics. There are other formulations also. In this, uh, the central equation is in terms of a function which we call wave function and that equation once again let me write minus h cross square over 2m del square, you remember del square psi of space coordinates then plus potential energy function that is also dependent on space coordinates in general and then uh, this psi r once again multiplication by this that is equal to e psi. So, essentially in this equation we have this e which we want to find and then we have the psi that we want to find. This psi r which is known as wave function it is supposed to contain all the information about that particle which is subjected to this potential and uh, everything about it is contained in this wave function. If it is solution of this equation which is known as time independent Schrodinger equation, okay, time independent Schrodinger equation, then uh, this corresponds to a stationary state in which the energy is definite. When I say definite that also has a, a, a big uh, physics in it, but let me suppress it for the time being. So, uh, with a definite energy if the particle is, uh, is existing in this potential then this equation gives me this wave function and this wave function that contains all the information. Now, for hydrogen atom for hydrogen atom where u of r is it only depends on the distance from the origin from that nucleus from the proton and that is uh, minus e square over 4 pi epsilon naught r. So, for uh, hydrogen atom if you solve this equation and remember you have to follow the boundary conditions that this psi this wave function has to be finite everywhere all those boundary conditions then it should go to 0 at infinite distance from the origin it has to be continuous all those conditions are there and then it has to be square integrable So, keeping in uh, mind that the uh, psi has to satisfy these boundary conditions and this equation, you have to find E energy as well as this function psi which uh, satisfy this equation and this. And if we look for those function, it turns out that there are some specific wave functions and those wave functions with uh, and there is naturally some specific energies. Okay? So, the energies turned out to be the same as that uh, in our Bohr's model which was minus m e 4 then 2 times 4 pi epsilon naught square h cross square n square the same. So, the for n is equal to 1 that means the lowest one the energy is minus 13.6 e v next one will be minus 3 point E v and so on. So, for this energy, this energy you can find psi r. Okay? If, you, if you take some other energy say minus 10 E v, maybe you will not find any psi there. So, for this ground state, uh, we have uh, our uh, uh, a particular wave function and that wave function uh, has, a, has a value then you have n is equal to 2 which corresponds to E equal to minus 3.4 E V. 
Now, interestingly, that uh, we discussed last time that uh, a wave function is described in terms of four parameters n, l, and ml. This, way, this equation will give me a function which uh, can be characterized by these three numbers, these three parameters n, l, and ml, in which uh, n, which is known as principal quantum number, can take values 1, 2, 3 integer values. This l, which is related to angular momentum, this can take values 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1. And then this ml, which can take values from minus l to plus l in steps of 1. So, those things we discussed. So, that means, uh, if you tell me what is n, what is l, what is ml, I know that there is a function, you are talking of a function and the function is in terms of space coordinate hmm? and uh, spherical coordinates will be best suited. So, you can get a function in terms of r, theta and phi. R is the distance from the origin and theta and phi are angles which describe the orientation. So, the wave function is completely fixed in terms of these quantities. But then uh, you also have uh, spin angular momentum for which uh, I cannot describe uh, any, any picture because this is uh, something which is beyond all classical descriptions. So, nothing like uh, electron is spinning about its diameter, there is no diameter of electron. So, nothing of that sort. Any kind of motion in the space, the angular momentum corresponding to that is orbital angular momentum and that is already there in this L and ML. So, that spin part is purely quantum phenomena, purely quantum phenomena, there is no analog in classical mechanics for that, but it does exist and uh, for that we write our function as, uh, we just write a, a function for which I do not give any functional form, okay. but then uh, it is chi m s and that m s can take two values minus half or plus half. Then we talked of magnitude of uh, angular momentum. The magnitude of angular momentum is L, L plus 1 square root of that h cross, that is the magnitude of orbital angular momentum and here it is square root of s, s plus 1 and then h cross with s equal to half. So, for all electrons s is equal to half. Here this L can take value 0, 1, 2, etcetera. So, different electrons can have different L, but all electrons have the same s. And here also it goes from minus s to plus s in steps of 1. So, all those things we discussed. So, if I give you all these parameters, all these quantum numbers, four quantum numbers for hydrogen atom, I have given you a quantum state, okay. a quantum state. A quantum state means the entire information about the system which it is possible to have is contained in that. And from that uh, uh, quantum state, how to derive those information, that is a separate chapter. If I know the wave wave function, let me write one wave function once again for uh, uh, n equal to 1 and uh, n equal to 2 also. So, for n is equal to 1, that means energy minus 13.6 E v, the wave function is L is 0, only one value of L is allowed and only one value of ml is allowed. So, the wave function is written as 1, 0, 0. The first one is n, the second one is l and the third one is ml and that turns out to be 1 over square root of pi a naught cube and then e power minus r by a naught. a naught is the Bohr's radius. So, this is the wave function and then uh, barring spin part how this contains all the information about the electron. 
first let us see the probability density of finding the electron in some detail hmm, some volume so if you have a, a, a volume here if you have a small volume here d tau and this is at position vector r then the probability is p at that uh, in that d tau hmm, so that is uh, the probability p at probability in that d tau there so this uh, you can write that as let's write dp that probability is this thing and if you can do that this is 1 over pi a naught cube and e power minus 2r by a naught right and then uh, the uh, the uh, where the electron is where the electron is is to be found to be located so this function has that uh, information this function and from this we have derived this so this gives me that probability now if i ask in terms of the distance from the proton that means uh, i take uh, a distance r and i draw a spherical surface all points at distance r will be on this surface and then i take another surface with radius r plus dr Okay, another surface with radius r plus dr. Then uh, I have uh, a spherical shell. Inner radius is r, outer radius is r plus dr. So if the electron is anywhere in this uh, shell, the distance from the proton is between r and r plus dr. What is the probability of that? So I ask for probability. of finding the electron at a distance between r and r plus dr from the nucleus. So if ask if I ask for this probability, and that probability you know that is uh, psi uh, r square d tau. In fact, you have to multiply by d tau, then you get the probability. So this is uh, mod psi square, which is this much, which is one over pi a naught cube e power minus two r by a naught this is this part and for d tau you will be writing 4 pi r square dr the volume that i am allowing that volume is that of uh, that spherical shell and that volume is 4 pi r square dr so the probability that the electron is at a distance between r and r plus dr is given by this function so it it is it is uh, this pi can be cancelled. So, 4 divided by a naught cube is 4 divided by a naught cube and then r square and e to the power minus 2 r over a naught and then dr. So, this thing is known as radial probability density this is known as radial probability density okay so it gives you this dr i am leaving out so it is a probability density radial probability density you multiply by dr and you get the probability in that dr width that i have given r to r plus dr so this is radial probability density and if you plot this if you plot this radial 
probability density as a function of r radial probability density let me write p r here as a function of r. So, that turns out to be something of this like this type. And the maximum, the maximum turns out a at a very a nice uh, separation at a very nice distance from the origin and that nice distance is nothing but Bohr's radius A naught. So, in Bohr model in ground state in lowest energy state minus 13.6 E V the electron was allowed only one distance from the proton and that was A naught that was Bohr radius mine that was 0 0.053 nanometers. So, that is it, but here there is a probability of uh, electron at this distance at this distance at this distance much smaller than A naught close to A naught at A naught more than A naught like this. So, in this Schrodinger picture the electron is not going on a circle, not confined in, uh, at the surface of uh, a, sphere, uh, a sphere, its distance from the origin from the proton is not definite, its distance from the proton can be anything from uh, 0 to infinity in fact. Of course, the maximum radial density turns out to be at a naught, the maximum probability density radial probability density is at 0 0.053 nanometer, but uh, all these ranges uh, are probable you can have electron here you can have electron there. And since this wave function does not have any theta dependence it does not have any theta dependence therefore, this probability density is also symmetric spherically symmetric. So, if you want to make a picture mental picture in Bohr's model we had the mental picture that is going in a circular orbit, but here if you want to make such a mental picture you have to make some kind of a cloud with varying density at Bohr radius its radial density is more and otherwise uh, you have density less then density more and then again density less and so on. So, it is a cloud, it is a big cloud, it is extended cloud, it can extend to anything in, prin in principle. Of course, uh, this uh, at what length it is it becomes insignificant. Okay? So, that is uh, given by this scale, how many times of A naught, A naught is 0 0.053. So, 10 times of that, 15 times of that, 20 times of that like that. Uh, it is insignificant. So, it does not mean that uh, at 1 meter you will find uh, the electron, it will be still in nanometers only, uh, but uh, then uh, not at not at A naught alone. So, that is the kind of picture for this. So, this is about the uh, location, this is about the position. If I if I go and uh, locate where the electron is. Uh, these are the places where I can locate and these are the probability uh, of, uh, of, of those places finding the electrons at those places. But then uh, it has other information in it, it says that L is equal to 0, this wave function corresponds to L is equal to 0. So, it tells me that uh, the angular momentum orbital angular momentum is 0. Once again see the de deviation from uh, Niels Bohr's, uh, Bohr's model, in Bohr model the ground state n is equal to 1, we had the quantization rule, remember that quantization rule. In Bohr's model, the quantum physics was introduced into classical description using this L is equal to n h cross. So, for n equal to 1 L is h cross that is how the equations started and we got those energy expressions. 
So in ground state, in Bohr's model, the angular momentum is h cross. But uh, the quantum description, Schrodinger's description, when we are doing L is equal to 0, angular momentum is 0. And then Z component of angular momentum is also 0. So angular momentum is known from this wave function. Other quantities can also be obtained from this. Anything, anything, linear momentum, kinetic energy, potential energy, anything you have information contained in this. It may be definite, it may not be definite. The energy is definite, the angular momentum is definite, but the position is not definite. You can have all positions are, uh, are, are probable. So, similarly, if you go for, let us say, kinetic energy, maybe kinetic energy does not have a definite value at a given instant. There also, there are probabilities of different kinetic energies, but that probability is how much is that probability that can be obtained from this wave function? So, that is why I say once I have the wave function, I know everything that it is possible to know about that uh, system. So, if you completely specify a function, in this case uh, that spin part has to be included uh, plus half or minus half. So, that becomes a quantum state. The, the particle is in that particular state and in our case that state is defined by those four parameters n, l, ml and ms for hydrogen atom. Now let me talk of the first excited state that is n is equal to 2. So, if n is equal to 2, the energy is uh, minus 3.4 electron volt. Now, L can have two values now 0 or 1. If L is equal to 0, if L is equal to 0, with L is equal to 0, ML has to be 0. And then my wave function is 2, 0, 0. This is how I will write it. The wave function is psi 2 0 0. So, you have uh, n here, you have L here and you have ML here. It can also be L is equal to 1. If L is equal to 1, then ML can be uh, minus 1, 0 or plus 1. It can go from minus L to plus L in steps of 1. And then we will have a uh, psi 2 1 minus 1 psi 2 1 0 and psi 2 1 1. So, we have four functions, four different functions, these are different from each other, independent of each other. I have four different wave functions possible with the same energy minus 3.4 Ev. Okay? So, what I will say is that uh, here, here for n is equal to 1, let me write it here. For n is equal to 1, we had only one wave function psi 100 0, 0, with that energy minus 13.6 Ev and on top of that I had this psi chi ms, ms can be plus half and minus half. So, I had two different quantum states. I had two different quantum states and these two different quantum states were differing only in spin part, not in space part. Space part was identical, which was given by that wave function. But if there is, if n is equal to 2 and I am going to first excited the state, there are four different, one, two, three, four, four different wave functions. And what is the difference? Yes, the difference is in the space part. Here, the angular momentum is uh, 0. Here, the angular momentum is 1, L is equal to 1. So, the magnitude will be root over L, L plus 1 times H cross. So, those things are there. So, here for these three, L is equal to 1, for this one L is equal to 0 and that reflects in that uh, 
theta phi part. The wave function will have theta phi part. This is spherically symmetric, L is equal to 0. But for L is equal to 1, you will have theta phi part. And that theta phi part will be different in these three because ML is different. ML is minus 1 here, ML is 0 here, ML is plus 1 here. So I have four different kinds of wave functions and with each of them you can put uh, the spin part and that spin part is once again chi ms plus half and minus half. So how many states are there? How many quantum states are there with this energy? Four different uh, wave functions, one, two, three, four. With each you can put uh, chi plus half or chi minus half. So there are eight quantum states. You have eight quantum states. Likewise, likewise things will, ha will happen. Now let me also tell you a special kind of nomenclature that people use. This L is equal to 0 is called S. L is equal to 0 is called S. L equal to 1 is called P. L is equal to 2 is called D. L is equal to 3 is called F. S, P, D, F. So, I, if I have this uh, state here, this is state here, n is equal to 2 and l is equal to 0. So, this will be called 2s state, this will be called 2s. And when you specify n and l, okay, when you specify n and l, then you call it orbital. So, 2s is an orbital where n is equal to 2 and s is equal l is equal to 0 and ml is anyway 0, but that is not mentioned here. Okay, so, 2s. So, 2s will have two quantum states because your wave function is fixed 2, 0, 0, but then you have uh, two spin states. So, there are two quantum states in 2s. How many quantum states are there in 1s? Once again, n is equal to 1, does not matter, l is equal to 0, s state, 1 s, l is equal to 0. If l is 0, ml is 0. So, only one wave function and then chi ms, ms equal to plus half minus half, once again 2. All s states will have two quantum, two quantum states. Similarly, all p states, these are p states. Here L is equal to 1, so it is P, this is 2P, all these are 2P states, all these are 2P, orbitals rather, these are 2P orbitals, okay. And in 2P orbital, in 2P orbital, you can have uh, this or this or this, so three wave functions, space part of, of the whole thing, this is the space part depends on r theta and phi. So, 3 and then a sp spin part. So, into 2 that is 6. So, 2 p will have 6 quantum states. All p, 3 p, 4 p, every p orbital will have 6 quantum states. right? So, you can uh, count the number of quantum states in an orbital or if only principal uh, quantum number is given n equal to n 1 how many quantum states are there n equal to 2 how many quantum states are there. So, those things can be counted in this fashion remembering that L goes from uh, 0 to n minus 1 in steps of 1 you can count. And then uh, ML for each L, ML goes from minus L to plus L, you can count. So, those, this way you can count the things. So, we have done uh, enough 
with uh, hydrogen atom. Lots of quantum ideas have been introduced. It will take time to digest them because they are uh, very new kind of things for which we don't have any intuition from our daily life. But as uh, time passes, you live with quantum physics, so you will feel comfortable. Okay? So, from next lectures, we will uh, be doing quantum mechanics of uh, larger atoms and finally solids and then we will talk of conduction.